Hello everybody. Purpose of this video is to give you a brief introduction into the theory of double data rate memory. In a double data rate memory, data is stored on small capacitors on a silicon substrate. Either the capacitor is charged or it isn't. And if it's charged, it's going to start discharging. To keep the capacitors charged, the data is periodically read and written back again. The process of keeping capacitors charged is called refresh. This needs to happen the whole time the DDR is in operation. While the capacitors are being refreshed, the system that the DDR is installed in may wish to read or write the memory. After all, that's what a memory is there for. I suppose an analogy would be like for us. We need to breathe, which would be like a refresh, and talking, which would be like data access. We have to do this at the same time. Well, actually, we need to somehow sequence breathing like refresh and data access like talking in a way that makes it transparent. By the way, DDR means double data rate, means data is at transferred on rising and falling edges of a clock signal. Now, data lives in a specific location inside the DDR. To access the data, the system provides a column address and a row address. The same physical connections to the DDR is used for both row and column. To access the memory, the system places the row address on the address bus and invokes the row address strobe. Then it places the column address on the address bus and invokes the column address strobe. Data is typically read or written in burst on consecutive rising and falling clock edges in the DDR. This is typically eight consecutive reads or writes. Data from the DDR is normally transferred to and from a fast access cache memory resided in a controller or CPU. The inner workings of the DDR are complicated as shown in the conceptual block diagram. When I was doing double data rate memory controllers, all of these banks were not included inside the uh, DDR device, but instead I had to wire them all up on a circuit board. But that was years ago. For, for board routing, it is important to treat, treat the address and control signals different from the data signals. The data signals are typically routed point to point. And signal integrity needs to be maintained at both ends of the signal. DDR inputs, which are inputs to the memory and sourced by the controller, are typically address and control. It's one output from the DDR controller going to multiple DDR devices. And signal integrity needs to main be maintained at the inputs to the DDR. Now there are two typical methods for routing DDR inputs, the address and control. There's the T-type me methodology, which was used back in the days of DDR and DDR2. Now that the days of DDR3 and DDR4, we don't see this typology very often. Nowadays we use flyby technology because the new DDR devices have circuitry in them called read and write leveling to adjust clock strobes. Basically, if you look at the signal which exits the DDRAM controller, it's going to go and hit bank 1, bank 3, bank 4, and bank 0 in this conceptual drawing at different times. And there is circuitry inside the controller to account for that. This concludes my quick introduction to DDR memory theory and routing theory. Thank you very much.